Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Bentornati. If you're new here, hey, welcome, my name's Katie. I live in the south of Italy, in Puglia. I moved here a few months ago, and today I want to tell you about some of the things that have given me and my partner, Connor, shock culturali, if you will. So here we go. Here are some things that have really stuck out to us. Number one, no cappuccino after noon. Niente cappuccino dopo mezzogiorno. This applies for not only cappuccinos, but also just adding milk to your coffee, like the one I added here. So I made this coffee from my mocha pot, not the one on my t-shirt, my actual mocha pot, and I like adding milk to it. Totally acceptable in the morning. After morning, not cool. They really consider milk, and so cappuccinos also, as a breakfast time thing. Which brings me to point number two. Breakfast in Italy is sweet. By and large, you will find so many dolci. Sweet treats, pastries, it might go without saying, but I'll extrapolate. As Americans, we love our egg. We love our hash browns. We love our bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches. Those are not things that you can expect breakfast time here in Italy. Il 90% delle persone mangia dolce e ci sono alcuni che fanno una colazione salata, però generalmente sono pochi. Mangi la colazione sempre dolce? Io sì, ho sempre fatto la colazione e sempre è stata dolce, sempre. Number three, very related to the first two points, which is just the very specific food rules here in Italy. Italians tend to think of food very traditionally. They don't really mix and match. It's like the way things are done are the way things are done for a reason. For instance, don't put cream in carbonara. Eresia. Another example is don't put meat in your pasta. For them, it's really two separate things. Yes, there's ragu, so usually some smaller kinds of meat will be incorporated into a sauce that can be tossed with the pasta. So like spaghetti and meatballs, you may think of as an Italian thing, that's an Italian-American thing, actually. They can't stand it. Impazziscono. When it comes to food, which they obviously do so well, right? I'm not doubting that at all. But they are very traditional and very passionate. It reminds me of a story that I was with a family that I know really well here in Italy, in Northern Italy, and I was showing them one of my YouTube videos. It was the olive oil cake recipe. So I was showing this video to my friends, mom and nonna, and it's so funny, the video started and they were like, oh, che bella, oh, meraviglioso, like, complimenti. And then as soon as I started mixing the ingredients, it shifted. They're like, oh no, the nonna was like, no, no, non è giusto, it's not, it's not the right way of doing things. So, spagliato. Number four, do not go outside with wet hair. Non uscire con i capelli bagnati. It has to do with something that they call la cervicale. All right, I'm meeting up with my friend Amy. She's Canadian. She's just as perplexed by this wet hair thing as I am, so I'll let her tell you. She's married to an Italian. Oh no, in Italy, you're not allowed to go outside with wet hair because if you do go outside with wet hair, you'll end up with something that's called cervicale. You cannot show up in front of your kid's school with wet hair because <laughs> I promise you will be looked upon as a horrible parent <laughs> and as someone who is defying laws here in Italy. <laughs> go outside with wet hair, if you don't wear a scarf, ti viene la cervicale. Speaking of hair, let's bring Connor into the picture. It's gone. Yeah, you shaved it off. You snapped it away. I snapped it away. Bringing you in here to talk about some of our culture shock moments. Oh yeah, boy, there's been a lot. Yeah. All right, so number five, Controra. Controra is actually a word in dialect, I've learned, but it is what they call the pause in the afternoon when it is like a ghost town. Everyone goes indoors, all the stores are shut down. It's kind of like the Spanish siesta, maybe you've heard of that. Yeah, everything's closed, except for like the chain supermarkets, but... I have a friend who lives here in Trani, is from here, and she said that well, all the, traditionally, all the grandmas say after lunch, especially if you're like a kid or a female, don't leave the house. That it's only when thieves and bad people go out. Okay, well that makes us bad people then, because we've, so we moved here, and part of like establishing residency for her to get her dual citizenship was like we had to be in the apartment 
the police were gonna come around and they were gonna knock on your door. Ivigili. Ivigili. And it was like, eh, and you have to be there. And if you don't, then they, they might not come back and you might have to do something or they'll leave a note. And us being the like goal. R rule like, followers. Yeah, and like <laughs> the goal oriented people who are like, we wanna get the citizenship, so we're gonna stay put until the police come. And our lawyer, who's awesome, was like, you can leave the house like after like two. They, they won't come after that. So every day we stayed in the house until two, and then as soon as two happened, we'd go for a walk. And so we got in this habit. Well, and we didn't realize that this is the exact opposite of what everyone else here does. Now that we go out in the mornings, it's so hustle bustle all morning until around two when people go in for lunch and then they do not leave until basically like four or five in the evening. Yeah, and then at night, the whole town is like out bopping around socializing well into the, well, there's a curfew at 10, but you can tell that Because like, of COVID. Yeah, things come to life later here. And what I think is extra interesting about this is that it is more so and almost only something that happens in the south of Italy, not so much in the north of Italy. All right, number six. <laughs> Insane queuing. I'm talking about the lines. We are not in England anymore when it comes to queuing. There are no, uh, you know, the British love themselves a good queue. They love standing in line neatly and orderly and following the rules. Uh, not so much here. I like to think of it as a chaotic cluster most of the time. Well, then sometimes there's like a take a number thing and that. Yeah, uh, so. they also love the tickets. Yeah, so, but. But it depends. For my permission to be in Italy, my permission sojourno, the advice was to get there like an hour early. So I got there an hour early and there was like a line snaking out of the door. Older women would just kind of like come and stand by the line and like talk and then, and then they would like walk out of the line. And so I wouldn't know if I was supposed to like fill their space or, or just, you know, and I don't know, I'm still a, like a, a new American. Uh, so I just kind of, uh, it was very stressful for my like, to undo my like British orderly mind of, hey, this is a line, we stand in line, no cuts. Oh, it was all very stressful. There's a lot of confusion when it comes to the lines. This rolls into like, there's just a lot of like bureaucracy and like you have to go to this place and get this form and you have to go to this place and get this form and you have to talk to this guy and, Oh, after all that, they do it wrong. All right, so today we're going to the Agencia del Entrante to get our health cards, which we were supposed to have already gotten. We've yeah. already been to this place. We went and sat for the exact same appointment that we also just sat for again this morning. But still didn't work out. We didn't have the right forms or something. So we left and now we're going back. We left because they sent us to City Hall for a different appointment. Yep, that's City Hall. <laughs> uh, and now, uh, because that appointment also failed last week, so we have to do that over. <laughs> and now we're hopefully going back to finally get our cards for the health system. Yeah, so. Number seven. The tone of voice used in, in normal speaking here, the directness is not something we're particularly used to not from the Midwest where we're both from, maybe more so in New York City where we lived for a decade, then certainly not in ever polite England. Yeah, in England where they would say sorry if they ran into you. Yeah, here people speak, uh, just the way of speaking is a little, it, like it's a, it sounds like they're mad at you, but they're not mad at you. That's just the tone and style in which people converse here. It sounds to our American ears like they're very frustrated with each other and they may or may not be fighting. But this actually, they're actually just talking. Un modo di parlare più forte. Esatto. I mean, for example, I was doing a craft project yesterday and I needed just some glue, some regular old glue, and uh, went to this shop and was talking to the woman about the glue and she was trying to understand how I wanted to use the glue and so then she could help direct me to which glue would be best. There's just the way she asked, it's like, it's just tends to be a little more aggressive. It's like, well, what are you using it for? What's the material? Is it wood? Is it plastic? You know, and this is all in Italian, and right? She kept so, smashing her finger yeah, on the table. Legno, because the, the table was wood. So she's like, legno, and legno. Also, when the masks are off, you'll be able to like see the smiles behind the directness. So it'd be good. Number eight. The bidet. <laughs> yes. So this was uh, actually not a huge culture shock for you, just because from travel, you're very used to these things and you love it. And we had one in New York, remember in Williamsburg? 
Oh yeah, that's right. But we you just, just never used it. I, I never, I never used it. But culturally, here it's a thing. That's what I'm like. Oh, come on, sono italiana. I better use the bidet. We won't speak about this too much because we did a whole video about it that I'll link to. Yeah. This is where the bidet comes in. Any last words? And it though? makes us kind of like weird perverts if you just keep talking about bidets. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's move on. Number nine. The grocery store situation, which I love, but it's really different from anywhere we've ever lived. It is a wonderful situation. Hey, there's no like Walmart big box stores where everyone goes and does all their grocery shopping at once. There are some supermarkets, you know, that is a thing here, but by and large, people really shop uh, on a smaller scale. So there's the fruit and veg stalls. There's a guy in a truck, open bed truck, he just kind of drives around the neighborhood and has a speaker. It says, potatoes, onions, carrots. It, I feel more connected to the people and the things that I'm buying because it's not just like on a shelf with a thousand other options. And there is like chain supermarkets as well. Yeah. They're just a little bit smaller. Definitely uh, way more Nutella and- uh, Pasta. Way more pasta. Way more pasta. Than you would get in your average American or British supermarket. I counted about 250 kinds of pasta. Dang. Culture shock. Mainly, the biggest culture shock for me here is just that like every day I get to wake up and go walk along the Adriatic with my lovely wife and um, you know, just so, so stoked to be on this adventure. And we're both so enjoying continuing the journey of learning Italian and the See. language and getting to practice every day and interacting with the people who are so, so kind here. So that being said, ci vediamo presto. As always, thank you so much to the Quirky Club, my incredible Patreon community. Grazie di cuore. And if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, what are you waiting for? Press that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. Ciao, ciao. Don't forget to keep it quirky. Bye.